Hey everyone, today I have another episode of Science News that will explore recent findings in the link between neonicotinoids and the health of bee colonies. I've covered this topic before. I've made numerous Science News episodes pointing out the numerous associations that have been observed between the insecticide and the health and the vitality of numerous species of insects, including bees. These studies have all linked the insecticides to colony collapse disorder, as exposure causes a number of sub-lethal alterations to the bee's behavior and perception that ultimately renders them unable to do its job for their hive, unable to sustain themselves, and thus makes them vulnerable to an early death. Entire bee colonies can collapse when their workforce gets disabled. The study that I want to talk about today looked less at the workforce of the bees, uh, less at the drones, and more at the bee queens. The queen bees are really important to a hive. When the queen emerges from hibernation at the beginning of the summer, she personally harvests food and resources to begin building the hive. She lays eggs in the early hive structure and continues to gather food as those first eggs grow and hatch into the first drones. Once the queen has birthed a sufficient army of drones and gotten the, the physical architecture of the hive going, she readjusts her focus to concentrate purely on laying eggs. Uh, she lets the drones take care of all of the rest of the physical labor. However, this doesn't mean that laying eggs isn't hard work. It's non-stop. It's exhaustive. It requires the queen's entire body to undergo gross distortions to accommodate all of this egg production and all of this egg laying. Now, the study that I want to talk about, which was published in the journal Environmental Entomology, documented bumblebee queens from the species Bombus impatiens that had been exposed to various levels of the commonly used neonicotinoid imatocloprid. The results of the exposure were widely detrimental to a range of the queen's functions. At an exposure of 1 part imatocloprid per billion, 10 parts per billion, and 25 parts per billion, the exposed queens were much more likely to die than the queens in the unexposed control group, and on average, they had a much shorter life expectancy. This is kind of worrisome, because in other experiments, uh, drones were exposed to one part per billion, and they were generally okay. They were able to survive it. They could tolerate it. But it seems like the queens, who are the most important individuals in the hive, might be particularly sensitive to the neonicotinoids. Furthermore, queens who were exposed to imatocloprid were slow to get started building their nests. In some cases, this delay extended for weeks, which is dangerous. I mean, this much of a delay in starting the hive can have major consequences later on in the summer, later on in the growing season. It's a huge resource disadvantage and a massive physical struggle to build a nest that only lasts for the later half of the growing season. Because keep in mind that while the drones and the queen are busy building their nests uh, later on in the season, they're having to compete with all of the drones from all of these other established hives that are a lot bigger with a lot more drones doing a lot more activity. It's also super dangerous for a hive to have its queen die, because then the number of new eggs being produced drops to zero until a new queen either uh, emerges or comes in, which is pretty rare. In most cases, the hive is doomed. This is just one more study in a long list of studies that grows every day, pointing out the dangers of neonicotinoids. We use these insecticides to protect our food crops from pests. But the problem is that these insecticides aren't confined to the farm plot. They float away in the wind, they get washed away in the rain, and they pollute nearby ecologies and affect all manner of insects, not just parasites who feed on crop foods. Bees are perhaps the most notorious victim of the collateral damage, but they're a species we can't afford to lose. Bees are critically important for the pollination of all manner of plants, and these plants are critically important not just for human industry, but for the safety and stability of the ecological communities of wildlife all around us. This study is just one more piece of evidence encouraging us to change our agriculture techniques, not just for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all the life that shares this planet with us.